This is a beautiful stretch of the Burdekin River just above the Clare Weir and the cane fields of the Leichhardt Irrigation Area are welcoming the evening shower that's sweeping across the district. It's April in Queensland's sugarcane heartland of Home Hill, a town that's built its reputation on days of sunshine and ideal growing conditions. This season is no exception. With only moderate wet season rainfall, planting is underway on Aaron Linton's Kirkney farm. Today he's checking to see how the crop is germinating in a block where a new subsurface drip tape irrigation system has been installed. Here's, a, here's an example of just, just planted um, 10 days ago. We had our drip tape in the middle, 251 side we have a billet which is germinating and 250 the other side we have a billet um, that's germinating. So this, as you can see the wetted area here, that's what that one little drip, this is a dripper. So every, every half a metre I have a dripper and you can see now it's just, just starting to drip out. Yeah, it's only a dribble, so it puts out a litre per hour. Hard thing for us to get our head around because we're used to flood irrigating. We look at the ground when it's mud, we know it's finished irrigating. Whereas with the drip, it's got a, you can be more precise, but you can also be precisely wrong. So, and uh, yeah, we're learning all the way. It's an irrigation system that promises much in terms of water use efficiency savings that could be as high as 50%. So the pressure compensated drip tape is being evaluated in a side-by-side -side comparison with furrow or flood irrigation. What Aaron needs is reliable data to calculate the extent of any improvements in water use efficiency and benefits in yield. It's then a matter of working out how that stacks up against the increased electricity cost of pumping water through the drip system under a higher pressure than what's needed for furrow irrigation. I've got uh, roughly two hectares of, uh, of drip tape that I'm putting in here. Um, and uh, I've got two hectares of uh, flood irrigation, which I'm using over here. We're going to compare, compare all the information, the inputs and the outputs um, and just see what the yield is like and, and the energy use, the water use uh, and any other benefits or pros or cons and put it down on a piece of paper so we can uh, come up with a scenario and a business case scenario of the proper results in the same block uh, compared apples with apples. Aaron's water is sourced directly from the river by a pump under licence. Blocks closest to the river are flood irrigated using plastic fluming. Runoff is channelled into a recycling pit that doubles as a storage dam for the drip system. The pressure compensated drip tape is installed on three blocks, covering 42 hectares on the opposite side of the road. Productivity has risen significantly since Aaron purchased the farm in 2010, and he attributes much of that to the introduction of drip irrigation. I was producing around three and a half to four thousand tonnes of cane, roughly, and now we're up to around nine and I think pretty sure we can get better. The biggest improver of our, our yield has been the drip system installed on 42 hectares. Um, that's been one of the major increases of yield for us. It's all done with a few clicks of a computer mouse inside the pumping shed where crop hydration can be precisely measured along with the nutrients added to the fertigation mix that's applied directly to the root base of the crop. With this computer I've, uh, I've got it all linked up to um, my irrigation sets and my pump, my uh, variable speed control for, for saving energy and it's, uh, it's all been hooked onto the internet and I can monitor it. Um, from wherever I am in the world. Um, I can set up automation, automated irrigation sets. Um, I can fertilise through it. And importantly, I can monitor. This is a moisture, moisture probe um, readout of what's been happening over the current, current period. And I can monitor that and adjust my irrigation sets accordingly. So tonight I'm gonna to irrigate uh, block one, two and three. Um, they're gonna get three and a half mils each um, per hectare and we're going to irrigate at 9pm tonight because that's the start of the cheaper tariff. I'm just going to 
have a look at my moisture probes of what's been happening over the weekend while I've been away. Uh, let's click on the block two, which is K, uh, Q183, second returns. So over the weekend we've had uh, these blue bars here, down the bottom, if anyone can see my mouse, is uh, the irrigation events. The blue bars are the length of time, the irrigation event, which lines up then with the probes levels. This red, red line, the bottom red line, is actually the top level of the soil. So that's uh, 100 millimetres below the surface. So the purple one on top, it's the wettest at the moment, but we can see the irrigation hasn't increased the level of the so I'm not pushing the water past the bottom, but we can monitor, uh, it's about 800 millimetres deep. So we can monitor what's happening all the way through the profile. The variable speed flow control system inside the shed is linked to the underground drip irrigation network out on the blocks by radio control. Flow is maintained using a system of valves, ensuring water and nutrients reach the crop at the required rate. So at the moment, I've just turned turn this valve on, um, on automatic. The water is being vented off the top of this valve through a little vent to, uh, to alleviate any water hammer in the line. And it's slowly opening to the required pressure that's been set by this pilot. There's a spring pilot in here that we can keep the pressure at, at what we want it to do. There's three irrigation sets in this block. The valves, the radio, and all the communication um, centre basically for the infield type stuff. We've got the probes all run out into their own individual sets and they're all hardwired back to this one, one spot and it sends a signal via radio back to my shed and which it turns into a computer. I've got a fertiliser brew that we mix up in the tank with nitrogen and potassium and the computer, I program it in, I want to put out a little bit each day. So I'll put out a little bit of fertiliser each day, each night uh, when I'm irrigating. So instead of being one hit or any availability for any sort of runoff, if there is going to be anything, this really reduces it because I just give it, I'm trying to give it what the plant can take up at a time rather than having an abundance in the soil. Any irrigation runoff, there is none. There is, uh, everything is, comes out as a drip underground. The drip tape was installed using the same GPS technology that guides the controlled traffic system under which the farm is managed. It means cane is planted directly above where the water and nutrients are being released in precise amounts. So the tape I'm using is, uh, is a pressure compensated tape. So that means that this, the emitter can put out the same amount of water whether it's under a high pressure or low pressure within a certain range. Um, which is pretty new technology for, for the, the tape manufacturers. Um, here's an example of, of an emitter. I have one of these every 500 mils. So, and it lets out a litre of water an hour. The drip system offers some clear environmental benefits. Gradual subsurface application of water and fertiliser minimises the potential for nutrient runoff in rainfall events and limits the deep drainage into the aquifer. And because there's no water sitting on the surface with the drip system, weed growth is limited, cutting down substantially on the need for herbicides. Another added benefit is that the system can be monitored and controlled anywhere there's access to a smartphone and the internet. And that's very handy when Aaron's pursuing his other passion, yacht racing. Yeah, yeah, I've been, uh, I've been in Western Australia uh, doing world titles over there and I've checked my, um, checked my uh, irrigation system on my phone and I've been on Hamilton Island race week in between races even out on the water. As long as I've got internet access so I can, I can check my, what's happening on my farm. Like any irrigation system, the drip tape does require maintenance, including occasional flushing, but so far it's proven to be reliable. Yeah, this is the end of the underground system. Um, the, sub, the main line comes to here, this is the end of the main line. And uh, so it's, it's bringing, with velocity, all the water to here. And it brings the particles, any build up of anything that's inside. 
theoretically comes to here and, and comes out. And I'll have the other, the same thing at the bottom end of the paddock. So it runs through all the tapes. We increase the velocity of, of flow in the tapes to get the same sort of sort of algae or anything out of out of uh, the sub mains down the bottom. The drip system also offers substantial labour cost savings when compared with furrow irrigation. Flooding cane fields is a time consuming and labour intensive process. So uh, in the flood irrigation system, um, compared to the drip, the drip once it's all in and set up, it's uh, basically stuck or it sets the program on the computer and it does its job. In the flood irrigation system we have the plastic fluting. Um, we have to come along, set up cups, which we, we just change the flow rate, base flow rate of the of the water down our furrows to suit to suit the blocks. Um, it can be quite labour intensive if we want to cultivate the paddock. We've got to come along, remove all the cups, roll the fluming up, knock our end banks down um, for any anything we want to do in the paddock. Um, otherwise, we can damage it, especially for harvesting. So far, the drip system has cost in the vicinity of a quarter of a million dollars to install. Aaron admits it would not have been possible without funding of close to $100,000 that he received under the Australian Government Reef Program, formerly known as Reef Rescue. To be able to get Reef Rescue funding was basically the impetus of uh, being able to, to do this because it takes, uh, taking a lot of risks, it's sort of a bit of an untried thing. Um, here in this area anyway and so the reef rescue really helped make my decision that I will be getting good benefits environmentally plus taking a bit of the risk out of it. I still had a, quite a lot of, of my risk but taking a bit of the risk out of it to help implement it. With the risk there's also the reward of seeing environmental outcomes flow downstream to the Burdekin Delta and beyond. Sustainable farming practices, helping guard the Great Barrier Reef, a place that Aaron Linton is as eager as anyone to protect.